again. We okay? <clears throat> Hang on a sec. What are you doing? Just moving my stool a little bit. Oh, it's my leg. Okay. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Sullivan family. So uh, we're here again. We're doing one of our uh, You Asked, We Answered uh, vlogs. I was supposed to have done it last night, but we were busy last night and yesterday, so we couldn't film a vlog. So um, again, we've been asked quite a few questions. Uh, the last one we discussed, well, the last one we talked about was our Christmas preparations, was it? How we prepare for Christmas. Yes, it was. So the last question... Yeah, I can't remember what I did yesterday. You asked me. You, I've got the worst memory in the world. So the last question and answer we did was all about our preparations for Christmas. So uh, this one, um, all the all the questions that I've been asked um, on the comments and all that kind of stuff, I've, I've got down on a note on my phone. So I'm going through the list and this time we've picked um, keeping in a cot. So how long do you keep, how long do we keep children in a cot and bedtime routine? So two separate questions, but we thought we'd answer both um, in this video. Okay, first one then, um, keeping in a cot. So how long do we keep children in a cot? Until they climb out. Pretty much. So, as long um, as possible. Yeah. Basically, we keep them in a cot until they are telling you that they want to be out of a cot. I um, think it's different. It? It's been different. I think Elizabeth was probably... Elizabeth was probably like... I don't know, under two when we took her out, wasn't she? Because we thought that was, we were following the guidelines and that was what we were supposed to do and all that. And I just remember it being a nightmare. Yeah. Because she wouldn't stay in the bed because she was kind of like, it was like she was frightened of not having the sides yeah. because she was quite young. Um, we persevered and she stayed there eventually. Uh, I can't remember with Olivia. She probably was about the same. But then with the twins... Mm -hmm. For quite some time, they were in cots together, weren't they? And then they had separate cots. Yeah, but then they had a really tiny bedroom, if you remember. Yeah. And they were side by side. And then they had the... the because they took um, cot beds, didn't they? Yeah. So we turned them into beds. But I'm pretty sure they would have been a lot older because, you know, twins... Oh, I remember why. Because they started climbing out. Yes. So they started climbing out the cot. And, of course, then it's a bit dangerous. Yeah when they start climbing out, because they would climb out and fall off the side. And as soon as they did that, we were like, that's it, they've got to go. It's a, the way, what we've learned is the the, in, the, the child's individual, so um, they will tell you when they're ready to get out of a cot um, by trying to climb out of it. That's the first That's the first thing, isn't it? When they try and climb out of the cot or they're stood, or you, or you put them to bed and they're stood there bouncing and screaming and trying to get out, aren't they? And, and that's kind of the telltale sign for us to go, right, all right, we better try... Um, we better try taking them out of the cot or taking a side off or or, or that kind of thing. We've done that before as well, haven't yeah. we? With maybe some of them that have been a little bit less... Re well, not less ready to, to come out, but maybe... Because they find it quite... Over it's some, quite some of them do. Scary, so we've kind yeah. of kept one side on sometimes. There's normally the side against the wall, so they can still get out, but they've still got their side. The other thing we've done as well is to put a stair gate on, on the their door. bedroom door so that they can we did that with Elizabeth when she yeah. was small because we'd you know she'd come wandering out of the room and it was almost like she suddenly had all this space and we were advised to put a stair gate on the bedroom door because then it's just like they're still safe in their room um, they've still got that security yeah. and, also, and also you've then got a chance that they're not wandering about and they're going to go and fall down the stairs or whatever you know you've got them isolated in their room um, so they've still got that kind of security and secure and security for yourself. So, you know, even if they wake up and they're crying, you know that they're only at the stair gate of their bedroom door. I don't, so, I don't like shutting the doors. No. I mean, the older ones shut their door because they're older, but I don't like having doors closed. No. We'll pull them too, but I don't like thinking that they're in the room with the door closed tight. And I just, I don't know what it is. I just don't like yep. it. So I'd rather they had the door open a little tiny bit so they can still you know, open the door and um, have a stair gate there so that they're still relatively st safe yeah. in their room. Joseph loved his cot. He didn't yeah. want to get out. Yeah. Did he? But also, so so I guess what we're trying to say is each child is individual. You've kind of got to just go with the flow of each child. Um, if you do have problems with them screaming and not wanting to go to bed, 
you kind of have to do the controlled thing where you, where you put them back to bed and, and then they get up again and then you put them back to bed and you've just got to reassure them. And the stair gate is ideal for that. The stair gate on the door is ideal for that because that's another level of control uh, and security for them, I well, think, isn't it? just not ready. So just yeah, side back on that's right. Them. They're just not ready. Sometimes, the ch we, sometimes we've had you kind of feel that you have to do it because, you know, people tell you you've got to do it or the books say that you've got to do it or, you know, that the advice is to do it by such an age or... It's a bit like anything, isn't it? It's a bit like potty training. It's a bit like what they should eat and, you know, when they should be doing this by. And I mean, yeah, there are some stages which are crucial, you know, in Weaning development. Is one, well, it? not necessarily that, but that things, kind of thing. milestones they should be hitting. And if they're not, it's, it's you know, a red flag. But there's a lot of things that aren't really that, you know, they, they don't. Are not that important to have them done by that age yeah. because it's not going to hold them back of, developmentally. Of, why stress yourself out? Why stress, stress the child out. out? Why have all that bother <clears throat> if they're just not ready? Okay, then moving on to the bedtime routine. So, our bedtime routine, uh, we've always been pretty much the same, but it all depends on age, obviously, because obviously we've got ch children up to the age of 16 now. You shouldn't have to have a bedtime routine for children up to 16, to be honest. They just do what they uh, want. And, if you, and if you do try and instill a bedroom routine with they're teenagers, just, just tell you to poke off. off. Yeah. So um, there's no, there's no, <laughs> you know, so there's no point. I mean, there are basically, our four older ones, Noah still goes to bed at half it's past... Uh, Toby. Yeah. Noah still goes to bed at half past nine. Um, he's only just started high school, but I think that's going to have to change. It's going to change soon. He's just turned twelve as well, so I think um, I think it's going to have to. But the older four girls now that they're thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, um, nearly fourteen, or nearly 15, fourteen, 15. so fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. The twins are nearly fourteen now. They go to bed about half past ten, and that's like purely because um, they know that we're going to go to bed at about eleven. Half past ten. They're still milling around in the bathroom yeah. half past eleven half the time. Yeah. And they're always so, having a chin wag in think, their room anyway. I think the thing is, like, they all have their own little things that they do during the evening. Lizzie likes to just go upstairs and chill out and um, do her own thing, doesn't she? So she quite likes to just, just be in her own space. And she'll she'll happily take herself to bed when she's tired, won't she? So yep. she's quite often she's the first one to sleep. Um, Charlotte takes herself off to normally to watch Netflix about sort of Nine half nine, doesn't mm -hmm. she? Something like that. So she'll go upstairs and just chill out in a in room watching Netflix on her phone. Isabel and Charlotte, Isabel and Olivia, sorry, normally stay down and watch something with us. They'll watch something. At the moment, we're watching Sherlock. Again, we're going through Sherlock. Uh, or we'll watch some kind of crime drama. And to be honest, they're joining. awake longer than we are because we normally fall asleep on the sofa and they're still up. And then they go on up to bed and we're normally fighting for bathroom space with them. So, you know, they're supposed to go to bed about past 10, but they, they normally go to bed about quarter past 11. Yeah, about that sort of time. Don't you, Isabel? Hmm? You're supposed to go to bed at like half ten, and it's normally about eleven, quarter past eleven. <laughs> Sorry. Do you have another extension lead? What? No. Random. One of the lines is broken. Why? It won't work. Can we sort it out in a minute? <sighs> Just give us five minutes. Uh, my phone's about to die. Oh my god, dramas! What about the one? You can plug the... it in anywhere. What about the one on the toy kitchen? Honestly. Okay, that's the teenagers covered off. So um, let's talk about Toby and Eva. Toby and Eva are primary school. Toby's eight. eight and Eva's now ten. ten. So Toby will go to bed at eight o'clock. Eva will go to bed at half past eight. And it is working now. It, it will <laughs> it will kind of change as they grow up through primary school, but uh, and it'll change even more when they get to high school. <clears> I think it, so. as well, I'll point out that our kids get up really early in the morning. Mm -hmm. So because everything starts much earlier in this house than in any other house because it has to. So, you know, they they might go to bed at like eight o'clock. Um, not necessarily in the holidays, they'll go to bed later, but you know, school nights, they'll go to bed sort of eight, half eight, because they'll be up. I mean, Eva's up at half six. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like they get yeah. up at like half seven, they're up at, and the tiny ones are up at five, so half five. That's why things are a little bit, but yeah. you know, Eva's, I mean, they'll stretch it to like nine, half nine in the holidays, won't yeah. they? But school nights, Eva's half past eight, although she's normally not asleep till about nine o'clock, but, um, and Toby is eight because he gets he gets really restless. Uh, yeah, he does. Really, and, and he, really, he really actually restless. Get, he gets up with the little ones at about five o'clock in the morning. So he can't. So he, um, if, and and he won't go back to. Toby to bed, doesn't relax uh, very well, does he? No, he doesn't, doesn't relax in the evenings very well. He can't. He can't just sit 
in the evenings and sometimes he, you need to kind of be like do you need to go to bed and he's like yeah he's waiting to go to bed mm -hmm. because that's the only time he can properly switch off and totally relax because yeah. he's he's constantly got to be up and down doing and up something and down and moving doing something. touching something grabbing something yeah he can't switch off can he no he can't switch off and um i think he needs to kind of he needs that eight o'clock is bedtime he needs that routine he likes to go to bed doesn't he, he? does Okay, and last but not least, the four little ones. So we've got Joseph, Agnes, and the twinnies. Um, and so, so Joseph is now three, Agnes is four, and the twinnies are five. It will be six in January. They go to bed. They don't go to bed. We start the bedtime routine at half past five. So we start our tea time routine at four. Normally that's finished by five. They've then got half an hour to, to mill about, have a, have a go on their iPads or whatever. And then at half past five, they'll go, upstairs. they'll go upstairs. Olivia will take them into their bedroom. And if Olivia's not here, then one of the others will step in and look after them. Charlotte then helps me bath the kids, um, bath the little ones. And you then get on with the tidying up downstairs with Isabel, don't you? That's what normally happens in Noah. Um, so they will they will go up for a bath at half past five. Um, they'll get bathed, te teeth brushed, all the good stuff. And then by about half past six, they are in bed and going to sleep. So half past six, quarter to seven, latest, they're, they're in bed, aren't they? Um, Agnes still has a bottle of um, almond milk, doesn't she? So but um, but uh, Joseph has given that up. He doesn't have milk anymore. Um, and obviously the twins are too old. Yeah, so the four little ones go to bed at uh, half past five. Half past six. They're, they well, they're normally in bed by quarter to seven. They've to kind of wind mm -hmm. down in their room, don't they? I mean, when the older ones were, were younger, we probably used to do story time and and everything else whereas now they kind of tend to they'll watch maybe watch a film in the room or yeah. um just play with a doll's house or something quiet they're not allowed to be like jumping around yeah. anything it's quiet time from half past five and the reason we take them up so much earlier is because if we didn't we wouldn't fit everybody in no. we've only got one bathroom so if they're in the bath like half past five till half past six you know bath in each each one of them um toby then normally goes in after yeah and then eva will go in and have a shower after and then noah. noah will have a shower and then obviously the older ones have to have a shower as well so shower times if you think everybody gets half an hour in the bathroom to themselves which isn't long when you're you know when you think about it that's yeah. to kind of do everything you need to do get ready for bed um it normally gets to the point where olivia doesn't get a shower <laughs> she has to have one in the morning because there's not enough time um because that's quite that's like a whole chunk of the evening isn't yeah. it so that's why that we start that that much earlier i think the twins might be getting to the stage where they need maybe that little bit a little bit longer to kind of make them stay in bed a little bit longer in the morning but then i don't know it's, if they would stay in bed it's because we're well. up it's so difficult it's... as well because they share a bedroom with agnes <clears throat> and they all go bed together so it's, it's, it's difficult and we're up early yeah. so everybody gets up early yeah. it's not like they're getting up before we are although agnes and joseph do but that's a different story. It is. Um, the twins kind of get up after us, so they hear us get up, and then they get up. Yeah. So it's kind of, and you know, they still Erin still gets really, really tired, doesn't mm -hmm. she? She's still really. Well, they um, get tired from school, don't they? They're, yeah. they're exhausted. And they're still just little, mm. so yeah, that's why they kind of they need that that extra sleep. But also, why we start earlier because otherwise, people would just wouldn't get a shower. Eva. Oi. So starting to argue now too, about who's going in the shower. You're not in the shower. See? Hurry up. Oi! Sorry. I actually Sorry my butt. I actually was going Okay then, so rounding it rounding it all off then, uh basically over the last fifteen years we've kind of learnt as you do and we're still learning, aren't we? We're still learning about everything, but uh, over the years we've become more relaxed. But routine is the key. Especially for the younger ones, routine is the key. They still need their routine. They still need their bedtime routine. And to be honest with you, it's the only way that we get to relax in the evening as well, isn't it? I think it? as well, you've got to kind of be a little bit flexible. So, I mean, we're quite routine because we have to be, because obviously there's certain things that we have to do and there's a lot of people in the house. But we can be flexible on that. If we're out or if like Ben's away and I've got to take everybody to pick the girls up from dancing or something, so the little ones then can't get a bath until whatever time. But it's having that... They know what comes next. It's it's not always necessarily about the time. It's about what they they know that they go upstairs and that means quiet time. And then, then they have a bath and brush their teeth and get the pyjamas on. And then it's quiet time in bed. It's about having that kind of routine. Wind down. 
yeah wind down routine before bed so you can kind of push it half an hour because they can't tell the time so it, you can kind of push it a little bit if you need to for for some things but it's kind of in, it's always been really important to us to keep that kind of routine and although the older ones we don't say oh it's time to do this now and it's time to do that now but because they've always done it since they were small yeah that's kind of what they do now yeah. you know they they'll have a shower they'll get the pajamas on they'll brush their teeth they'll come downstairs and eat all the snacks and then they'll go to bed but it's kind of it sticks with them doesn't yeah, it yeah it does it's that kind of we we've always said you you have a, you you have to have a shower every day. It's so either in the morning or the evenings. You have to have a shower every day because we shower every morning. You know, therefore that's part of what we do. And the same as the little ones will have a bath every day, just to kind of instill that in them as well that they have a bath or a sh later on it'll be a shower. Pretty much, yeah. When it so most days. Most days. But I think as well. Um, I was going to say something about. Um, hang on, let me think. I've just got a baby just turned sideways and it's just really jabbing me. Um, it's really, it's really off putting. Um, oh, I was going to say um, about how you kind of, you're constantly changing things as well. Like Adapting. If, yeah, although the routine is the same, it's like thinking about Noah's getting older now, so we're going to kind of push his bedtime a little bit and you know the twins are getting older and do they need their bedtime pushing a bit i think it's that kind of you think you've you've i think when you have when you have your first baby and they suddenly start sleeping through you think that's it i've sussed it never ever think that you've sussed it never ever because you it will change they can change overnight it will change in a few months and mm -hmm. it will change again but don't ever feel put off by the fact that you think you've got it all under control and then something changes because that's just what happens as they grow they change all the time I don't know what they're doing. Um, they change all the time. That you know, they have growth spurts. They get poorly. They um, they get older. Things happen all the time. So don't. It's about not feeling like you know You're it's failing. all gone wrong mm -hmm. and you've you've failed because all of a sudden yeah, they were sleeping through and now they're not. Things happen all the time. Teething happens. You know, with with babies, they don't suddenly want to sleep anymore. Colic. I mean, Which we're, we're going to talk about that on another video, actually. Oh, God, kind of stuff. a nightmare. Yeah. But things happen, so don't ever feel like you've failed at something because all of a sudden they're not doing what they were doing because you constantly look at changing things a little bit. But if you've got kind of that basic routine instilled in them, that you've always got that. It helps. Yeah, that there. It really does help. Yeah, I think. So there we go, guys. Um, that is bedtime routine and keeping in a cot oh. covered off. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight into how we've managed over the last 15, 16 years uh, and how we're still managing. Obviously, we've got another new baby on the way, so we'll have it all again, won't we? It's all, all going to start again. Joseph gets up at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and just don't ever think that it's you that's doing anything wrong. It's always, it's the, the ba babies and children all constantly change, change constantly all change. So, um, yeah. Anybody so. that says they've got it all under control all the time, So anyway guys, we hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, drop us a like, and please drop us a comment and let you know, let us know what you think about our, our question and answer vlogs and how you found this one, because that'll be great. So um, anyway, we'll now see you in the next video. Bye!